Hey folks, it's Ridgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Boulder Canyon. We're going to continue on with just going around the outside of the field with our baler right here. And then as soon as we're done with that, we're going to first run around the outside of the field and collect... Actually, no. Yes, first we will go and collect up all of the bales. Then when we have collected up all of the bales, then we will get the... Uh, tractor over there and we will start the hired help working up and down the field over here gathering up all of the straw into rows ready for the rest of our baling and then once we've done that we will go round and we will start wrapping all of the grass up there I do need to set the time gap to five times speed I forgot to do that as soon as the grass was finished so that is now happening we're on five times speed and once we've done all of that, once we've got the wrapping done and everything, then we can stack up all of the bales and we can wait until we get some better prices. Because right now the prices for grass and, uh, for, sorry, silage and straw are not very good. If we have a look in here, we're only 361 with our barley, which is not particularly good. And we've got wool as well that we want to sell. That's dropping at the moment. That's not very good. Silage is above 250, which is what I originally said I wanted it to always be above. It's close to 300, but we have had above 300 a few times now. So I would like that to go above 300. I mean... That's pretty close there. That is a reasonable price. So we could actually consider selling the silage now. Uh, straw is definitely too low. That does that will just about double from what it is at the moment. So we will keep an eye on these prices and we'll see what they get up to. And so long as we can get some reasonable prices, then we will sell. The only thing that I haven't done is decide exactly how much quantity we're going to sell. What's our minimum sell quantity? For any grain um i was thinking that we would o we would get a bigger trailer and we would only sell full trailer loads and that would be it we wouldn't because like i, I just want to show you I'm, i know that a lot of you don't actually like me doing this going and looking in here you want me to keep going and talking and that's fair enough and i do agree i should keep going and talking however i do need to have a look at this uh that one right there is forty-five thousand liters and I think that would be a really good round number to use. We've got a few other trailers here. We can't use those. They're unacceptable ones. We've got ones for the truck over here, which could be a bit better using one for the truck. And there's one right there. That's 60,000 liters, but it's 80 grand for the trailer. And that one's 78, that one's 74. These are very, very expensive trailers. And... Not sure that we can afford them. That one there, though, is only 35,000, and it's 45,000 litres. And I'm sort of thinking that if a lorry was to come up, it wouldn't be unusual for a lorry to turn up with several um, trailers like that. It could have three or four trailers like that, all in a line. And that would... Now, I don't get... What's the difference between these two? They both hold the same amount. Design one. That's... Wheel set up. Okay, that's, that's just the different wheels. I'm, I'm not quite sure. We've got three sides here. It's a bit lower there on the sides, and it's a, a smaller one. Uh, this one here, I think it's just because it's got solid sides. So it, it's solid all the way around. This would be ideal for putting grain into, and it's 35,000. Yes, 35,000 is a lot of money, but that's, it does seem pretty good. That one there is 42. We got a 34. Um... Another 34,000 there, and then we've, we've got a few other optionals here. But the price of the trailers is quite high. Like that one there at 48,000 is 61,000 for the trailer, which is a huge amount of money, right? All of these are very, very expensive. And so I'm, I'm kind of wanting to weigh up between the two. Now, the only other thing I was thinking is maybe one of these, but again, it's still very expensive for what we're getting. So I'm thinking overall... That the best price that we could get for volume, so that we've got a trailer that we can sort of basically measure stuff out and tip, um, would be one of these. 
And I could see a lorry coming up from the lowlands, coming up here into the mountains in order to take these away. But it's unlikely the lorry would turn up and want to go away with only half a load. Right? He would want a full load and then he would want to go off to another farm a little bit distant and pick up another full load. So I'm thinking that if we were to buy that trailer right there for $35,000... Once we get $35,000, we buy that trailer right there. And then we say when we're selling bulk products like grain, we can only sell in quantities of 45,000. We're not allowed to sell less than 45,000 in one go. So if we sell third, if we sell 45,000 liters of grain and then we've only and we've got uh, 44,000 liters left, too bad the merchant doesn't want it. That's what I'm thinking. I think that we do need to be a bit strict on that one. Because we're so far away from anybody else. Um, or so far away from anybody that would be doing any buying. You know, they're, they're going to come up. They're going to want full loads. So they go to this farm right here. Then they travel 40 miles away to go to another farm. And they get another full load from there. And then they head the 150 miles back down the mountains where they can sell the grain. They're not going to want to do that with a part load. Even if it's almost a full load, I still don't think that they would want to do it with a part load. So I think that the 45,000 is a pretty good number because it's not ridiculously big. It's not, we're not like saying it's 100,000 litres or anything like that. But at the same time, um, it's not a, a ridiculously small amount. That sort of trailer, that size trailer, could easily be seen as a trailer that is pulled by a lorry over long distance, especially if you've got some sort of road train configuration. So that's my view on that one. That's what I think we should do and we should seriously consider. And I would like to hear your views and opinions in the comment section because I don't think I'm going to be at a point where I'm ready to sell grain this week. So I will be able to hear your points of view on this one before I have to finish up. So I'm just going to stop there with you. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm actually going to unhitch that baler right there. And then I'm going to take the mower. And I'm going to leave it over here next to the workshop. Right there. So it's ready for being serviced. So I'll lower that one down there and unhitch. Then I will go back round and... Well, for a minute, I don't actually need to get the front weight on just to pull this trailer. So we will run round really quick and we will pick up those bales. So I get that one and we will go and pick up all of the straw bales. And then once I've done that, then we will come back through and get the rest of the stuff. So right now I'm on pallets because we were moving the... Um, large square bales. That's the ones we want, isn't it? Um, I'm on pallets because we're moving the wool pallets. And yes, I am going to start doing the wool pallets now with uh, the auto loader rather than trying to do them by hand because of the just the amount of time it takes to try and do them by hand. I figure it would just be better for us all round. It's going to save a lot of time. And it's also going to save me a lot of frustration. Um... The one thing that is most likely to make me rage quit farming simulator, and yes, you can rage quit farming simulator, trust me on this, um, is pallet forks into pallets. Uh, the way that they, you, I can normally get the pallet forks in is trying to get the pallet forks back out again. Right, that invariably causes trouble for me. Invariably causes trouble, and... Yes, you know, it, I mean, even with the best will in the world, it's it still causes me some problems. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of thinking that I'd like to avoid having any more issues with that. So if I can not do very much work with pallet forks and pallets, it's going to be a lot better for me. It's going to be a lot better for... I think it's going to be better for everybody. I think it's going to be better for everybody involved if we don't have that going on. Now, I'm just wondering which way I should set the um, hired help going. Because last time with the combine, I actually put it going alongside the the line, sort of going down over that side. And we worked from that side over to this side of the field. And by doing so, it left all of the straw rows at an angle. And then when we went over it with the rake, it picked it up really nicely. So I'm, I'm not quite sure about that. Now, this one here, I am going to unload these off 
uh, just leave them there on the trailer like that before we do any more. Now I'm going to stop. And I'm going to switch over to uh, this tractor. And we're going to start doing the raking. So we'll start you up. And I'm hoping that it will actually just rake properly without any trouble. Now, we know that the small tractor is actually capable of running our, um, what do you call it? I'm just going to press H on here. It should just go and start. And it should also just run up and down right across the entire field. Uh, we know that our small tractor is capable of running the wrapper. So I'm hoping that we can just get that one started so that we can pick up those two grass bales so that they won't end up being in the way. And then we will go and get the baler going next. I'm not quite sure. I just want to watch this one get up to the top end of the field. It doesn't look like there's going to be anywhere in the field now that is going to cause us problems with the rake. At least this is what I'm hoping. We'll wait and see at the end of the row because it, the, the strange thing it does sometimes with like picking stuff up and dropping it down when it's not 100% absolutely... Right, it's done that bit alright. And now he'll come out round and he'll turn round and go through there. I think we can leave that one going. He's going to come down through there and he's going to... He's, he's definitely going to be putting two rows into one all the way through. And it's also going to be partially putting three rows into one in places. Although there it looks like it's more like two and a half rows into one. But yeah, you get the idea. We'll, we'll have some decent runs down through there now. So I will now switch over to this one. And our little electric tractor. Absolutely silent. And we will go and get the wrapper. Now this one will run the wrapper. And I know that this is actually a realistic thing. Uh, for those of you who might think that this tractor is not strong enough to run that wrapper. It does not require a very strong tractor at all to run a wrapper. Now, this admittedly is a square bale wrapper, which is slightly different to a round bale wrapper. However, I have seen both of them being run, and normally you would see these being run um, with the smallest tractor that... I mean, I've, I've only ever seen them being... I've never seen them run by an owner. I've only ever seen wrappers being run by a contractor coming in. And typically, most contractors do have a small 30 to 50 horsepower tractor kicking around somewhere. And that is the one that they would use for doing this job, right? They stick the smallest tractor they've got onto this and away they go. Which is why, that's, that's one of the reasons that employees don't generally like doing the wrapping job. It's not just because it's an insanely dull and painfully boring job that is utterly soul destroying it's also because you've got this tiny tiny little tractor that invariably is one of the first small tractors that got a cab which means that they've got glass all the way around you and no air conditioning or ventilation of any kind to speak of unless you actually physically take the doors off their hinges and it's in the middle of summer, so you've got blazing sunshine beating down upon you. It is not the most pleasant of jobs, right? It absolutely is not a particularly pleasant job to do, and it's not something I would wish upon anybody, really. Uh, I've, I've seen it done, and I can, I've never actually done it myself, but I've seen it done, and I can very well imagine what it is like to drive the tractors, because those tractors with the small cabs and everything, I've done that myself. I've done that myself quite a number of times, and I know exactly what that is like being stuck in that tractor in the blazing sunshine with no escape whatsoever from the heat in any way, shape, or form. So that is a familiar experience. Now, i got to get up this hill, and this is not going to be easy because this is quite a heavy wrapper, and this tractor is not very strong. So yes, a, a square bale wrapper like this, it probably would use a slightly more powerful tractor. Although, to be fair, this tractor is... I, I don't think it's tweaked particularly well. Um, but I see no reason why this tractor couldn't, in theory, run this wrapper. Because all they need... Like, 
the rappers generally have got their own oil reserve on board. They, they have their own oil tank. And the tractor doesn't need the oil tank from them. Now, interestingly, if you listen, you can hear the audio on this Rap Master 4044. Because I've doubled the speed of the visual on it, but I didn't actually do anything to the audio. So, the audio is still running. And it's still finishing up those bales. So, I don't know if the audio is ever actually going to finish, or if it's now bugged because of my adding... Oh, I think it did just finish, just then. It's now going again. Running another one. And I'll lower that down. But yeah, it's, um, this is just something that I think is, like, a thing now with this one, is it's just going to run continuously with the audio going on it. And I don't think there's a great deal that we can do about that. This is the other reason that I'm seriously considering. I did ask you, I think, yes, yes, I did. I asked you yesterday in yesterday's video, um, if you thought that I should increase the volume of the bales from 8,000 up to 12,000. Because we're going to be getting more bales. We're going to be needing to deal with more bales. And that's fine. I, I got no problem with dealing with more bales. But when we're doing jobs like this, it's a slow and tedious job. And I am wondering if a 12,000 litre bale might be a better thing to deal with than a, an 8,000. It's three bales rolled into one. It means that we've got less to handle. Now, doing the actual baling is not going to make any difference. But going and gathering the bales from the field with the trailer and doing the wrapping and stuff like that, this is where it makes a significant difference. And we've already noticed that with the 8,000 litre bales. All right, we've cut our work in half, but cutting it down again and making 12,000 litre bales. Is that something you want? Now, I, I do want to go cautiously with this because this is supposed to be a series that it is as realistic as we can get whilst maintaining a reasonable level of interest. And uh, so, yes, I know that autoloaders aren't realistic, right? I know that there are things like autoloaders that are not in the least bit realistic. However, I've sort of got to achieve a balance between realism, especially as this series in particular, I show everything. I don't cut any of it out, although I don't really cut anything out of the other series. Um, but... I'm, I, the whole point is I'm supposed to show everything. So we gotta, we've got to strike a balance between having uh, d doing everything that I want to do um, and, and keep it, keeping it all going and also being at least a little bit entertaining. So watching me wrap 200 bales of silage is not going to be entertaining. No one is going to want to watch me just go on and wrap 200 bales of silage. And... I don't want to make 200 bales of silage purely because it would be really tedious to go and wrap them. I've made well over 150 bales. I think I have done over 200 bales of silage in time lapse before now. And trust me, it's rather dull having to sit there and wrap them all. It's not an exciting task. Even when I use a fast sped up wrapper like this one, it's still not an exciting task. In the slightest, it's not even a little bit exciting. It's just mind numbing. And... You're not going to want to watch that. So that's what I'm that's what I'm getting at is you know what balance should we be achieve what balance should we be looking at achieving on this? Um is the 8000 liter bales sufficient for you? Do you think that that is about right as far as a balance goes? Or do you think that we should go up for a 12,000 litre bale because as we increase our grassland and that's what we're planning to do next we're going to be getting rid of those trees that's um you know, we're going to be doing some more work on those trees. I want to get rid of all of them. And then we've got room for cows up here. And that field is going to be altogether bigger than it is right now. And that means more grass bales coming along. More grass bales means that we've got more wrapping that we're going to need to do. Wrapping is the slow bit. This is the bit that takes the time and causes the tedium. This is what makes it all rather dull and uninteresting. And I don't want to do too much of this. But I do want the silage because silage is worth a fortune, right? We make an absolute fortune with silage. Let's go and have a look at something different for a minute. How are we doing over here? You actually seem to be doing a rather good job so far. We're a definite. We're, we're at least getting two rows into one. And it looks like in places it has been getting a third row almost into one as well. I think there was one point where it definitely got a third row into one. Um... 
But overall, things are looking pretty good here at the moment. We'll let that... Right, he, he, he's going to carry on. Or she's going to carry on, I should say. She's, she's doing an absolutely wonderful job. How are the prices moving at the moment? No change on those. We don't expect very much change at the moment. Wool has gone way down, so it's gonna it's it's gonna be at least tomorrow before wool is ready to do anything. And barley's not currently moving. So we'll leave those where they are and we will go back up to this one up here, which is still going through on the audio. Uh that's to be expected. It'll do that until I shut the game down now, I should think. Um so let's get that next one there, bring you over. We've got one more bale over here, and then we can start heading down the hill and just bringing out the rest of them. There's not actually that many left here. All we're really waiting on now is going to be the... Um, is whether or not we sell them now. This is the big decision, is whether I sell them now or wait and see what the silage prices do. Because th that silage could be at a peak rather than at a low point. If that silage is at a peak, it's going to drop. But... It could be at a low point right now. I don't think it's at a low point. I, I I would genuinely be surprised. I think that that is a peak at the moment at 297. So I'm thinking that if we don't go for it now, we're going to have to wait for a couple of days before we can sell silage. Uh, straw we'll be able to sell sooner. But I do think we could end up waiting a few days before we can sell silage. Now we've got $12,000, so that's not too much of an issue. However... We also need to take into account that we want to sell the silage as quickly as possible because we want to get another sheep pen. And getting that sheep pen is probably our top, well it is our top priority at the moment. So if I can't sell silage, I can't sell wool, the wool price has gone through the floor. Um, so I've got, I, I can't sell wool at the moment. So I've got silage is literally the only thing that I can sell. Straw, I can't sell that either. And yes, we're not going to get a great deal for straw anyway, but I am at least going to wait until the price comes up a little bit. Um, I don't need to worry about keeping straw just at the moment, even though the next crop is not going to be a straw producing crop. I still don't need to worry about it because we're not in a position to be buying any cows just yet. Uh, we've got sheep, and once we've bought another sheep pen, chickens is going to be our next focus. We're going to get a large chicken pen, so we will be keeping some grain back for that anyway. I mean, we're not it's not like we've got exact numbers for 45,000 litre trailers. I'm hoping that the 45,000 litre um, is something that you all agree with, that you all think is a, a reasonably good idea, because uh, personally, I think that is a good idea. Um, limiting it like that, and that's also then, I feel that it would be unusual to sell a half a load, right? Yes, you could say, well, you know, we got, a, I, I did originally say a minimum quantity, and then they'll come up and they'll get anything more on top of that. But the more I think about it, the more I think that that's not really what we would want to do. As like, uh, I don't think that a farm, uh, like a, a, a merchant is going to come up for half a load. I mean, you could argue along um, we, you could also argue that actually they would because they would come to us and they would get a half a load of barley along with the full load and then they would go to the other farm that's 20 or 30 miles away and they would top up that trailer with their barley as well. So you could argue along those lines and yes that is a very valid argument but I don't know it, it, it sort of, to me, that feels like it's making it a little bit too easy. This is supposed to be a hardcore series. And with me having to make quite a number of allowances, like doing... Um, uh, allow allowances like um, auto load and, and stuff like that, in order to, uh, you know, to, to make it reasonably interesting to watch, so it's not completely mind-numbing to actually watch and you're not watching me load up by hand every single bale that we produce because I don't want to do that because yes there will be some people that want to watch that I'm not saying that there aren't but the majority of people are not going to want to sit and uh, sit and watch me load every single bale we make at 4,000 litres um, I'm not going to do that I don't want to do that and the majority of people don't want to watch that so I've, I've got to it's, it's, it's all about this balance that we've got to strike and so I'm thinking that, yes, while it could be argued that the merchant would come up and he would take a part load from us and then he would go and take a part load from somebody else as well just to sort of make up the load. And yes, that would be a 
very realistic thing that they would actually do. The reason I don't want to do that is because of the hardcore series bit. I want to at least have some bits that are hardcore and um, well, it not necessarily has to be hardcore. It's presenting more of a challenge to us because if we don't have 45,000 litres of a particular crop, we can't sell it. So it's highly unlikely that one crop of soybeans is going to result in 45,000 litres, not on this field that we've got, which means that if we want to do soybeans, we have to do two crops in a row, or we just have to hold it and then wait a little bit longer before we can actually do anything with it. Probably the same with that. Oats, maybe, I don't know. Um, but yeah, you, you can sort of see where I'm coming from with that, I hope, and that's, that's kind of what I'm thinking on this, that that's... That's the balance that I'm thinking that it, it would be quite nice to try and achieve. And I think that it can actually work. I really do. Okay, I'm going to leave the bales in the field. And I'm going to get this one. I'm going to go and get that front weight a minute. And then we will hook the baler back on. And we will start baling the straw. And then we've got a load more bales in the field ready to sell. And unfortunately... I see. I'm, I'm, I'm really umming and eyeing about the price of the silage at the moment because of where it's just sitting. If it would just move a little bit, even if it would just move one number down, I would say, you know what, we're going to sell it now rather than waiting for it to drop and then come back up, which is going to be two days, which is going to take too long. If it drops by one number, then we know that we're in the right place. If it starts to go up, even better. That would be fantastic. If it's at a low point right now, that means that we could be looking at 330, 340 per thousand litres, which would be a huge amount of money, which would probably be enough to buy the new sheet pen. So that's why I'm waiting. I'm, I'm waiting with bated breath to find out what the bait, what the, the crop is going to do, what the, what the price of the crop is going to do and how it's going to move. To, dis to make the decision on when we sell those silage bales that I've just now gone and wrapped. I know that we've got one straw bale up at the top of the field. We won't forget that one. We also need to go and put fertilizer across all of this land. The grass and this one that we're on. This one is going to need to be... Actually, we don't need to do any preparation other than just throw some fertilizer on it. No other preparation is needed because we are, um, we've got the direct drill. So we don't need to worry about that. We will have to do more fertilizer because of the fact that we've got the, the Vardestad direct drill. But I'm quite happy with that. I'm, I'm happy with my purchase on that one. Because I do think that the horse required a little bit too much in the way of horsepower. Um, compared to what we've got available on this tractor right here. And we definitely can't afford to go buying another tractor just yet. I have said I'd like to mostly focus on the red stuff for this series. And... I don't regret that decision, however, we do now have the Class DLC. So I am wondering if our next tractor, after this one, when we do buy, and we will, we will have to be buying a bigger tractor at some point in order to be able to sort of keep up with everything that we want to do. Um, do you want me to stick with the Red family, or do you want me to go for a Class? Do you want me to have a look at one of the Class... Um, BC. I don't know if I've actually enabled the, the thingy on here, but you, you know you know the tractors are available in the Class DLC now, uh, so there's no point in me going and staring at them for 10 minutes. Um, do you want me to stick with the next size up for the case, which is, that was my original plan, was to just go for the next size up on the case tractors, or would you rather I went for the Class version instead? Get that kind of power range, the next step up from this one, uh, but go with one of the class tractors instead of uh, another case. I'm happy to do either. And that's sort of what I was thinking to do for this particular series. We would go for one or for the other. Um, well, we, I originally said that I was going to go for the red stuff for this one. We're going to keep it all um, case machinery uh, or case tractors anyway. Um, now, that, uh, when we're going with the new tractors. And New Holland did get quite a lot of um, love, i seen in the comments. But we're not doing New Holland. I will do New Holland at some point, but I don't want to do it on this one. Maybe after we've completed everything on here and we go for a different sort of uh, super hardcore series. 
And a lot of people have said they'd like to see me do a super hardcore series where I start with absolutely nothing and just go on a regular type of map and I earn my money through contracts. Do contracting work. Because I'm not going to be able to actually buy my own machinery until I've got somewhere to store it. I can't go and buy machinery and store it at a dealership, can I? I mean, I know I can technically with the rules of the game, but we kind of want to, you know, realistically, I can't do that, can I? Not realistically. I cannot go and buy stuff and then just stash it somewhere. That's not going to work. So that's another thing that we would consider for a future series. And, you know, whether we go for the uh, same sort of end result that we must have a, a set number of animals or we, we do a different end result, I don't really know. But that's kind of what I'm thinking for the next Hardcore series. And quite a lot of people have already commented about that um, previously saying, yes, they would love for me to do a different Hardcore series, but, um, you know, something to s based around contracting to start with. Because that's obviously something that we don't do in this one at all in any way, shape or form. And I don't want to do a next hardcore series. I don't want it to be on a forestry map. So we, we've, we've got a forestry map right here and we've done this. But I don't want to go and do the exact same thing again. It's just repeating myself. Um, it would be nice to take a different approach. So I'm, I'm kind of liking the idea of being a... A contractor to start with and essentially you're not even your own contractor to start with you're working for another contractor because they supply all the machinery and you get a small amount of money after you've done the contracting and I think that would be a very very cool thing so I would I'm, I'm gonna be on the lookout for a map because the rate that we're progressing with this now especially once we've got those trees cut down up there I know that we're on episode uh, was it this is episode 131 this one is um, I suspect that we will have this all wrapped up in another, well, I was going to say three or four months, but that might be a little bit, um, over positive. Probably a bit longer than three or four months, but we'll wait and see. It will be wrapped up, um, because the, the end game right here is one large pen of every type of animal. That's what we got to get, is one large pen of every type of animal. We're well on our way with the sheep. The chickens is going to be really simple. That's just 40 grand and then however much it costs to buy the chickens. Um, we've got grain now to supply the chickens. We've got grass to supply the sheep. Uh, the sheep, we're actually going to be looking for two large pens of those. And I'll probably do the same with the chickens. That's going to boost our income even further than what it is right now. Which means that uh, the money is going to start pouring in. And then all we got to do is get a large pen of pigs and a large pen of cattle. The pigs is going to be the most difficult one because we've got to have all of the food available for all of those pigs. Uh, the cows is not going to be easy because they will require quite a bit. So we are going to have to buy another chunk of land and cut down a load more trees in order to be able to supply them all. But we're getting through. We are able to do that faster now. We're able to sort of work through this faster and cutting down all of those trees is going to supply us a load more money as well. So I am now just at the very beginning of putting out feelers to see what sort of map we go for next. Where is this map going to be based? Uh, I know I'm getting a lot of requests for UK based maps because I haven't done any of them yet. Um, and I am seriously considering a UK based map for my next one um, for the Hardcore series because working as a contractor under uk based settings is something that i would be familiar with it's something that i would be able to recognize i don't know about seasons i almost certainly won't want to use seasons on it i know that there are a lot of fans of seasons but i'm shying away from that purely because i'm already using seasons on my other two playthroughs and i'm not planning to change that the Seasons is staying on the time lapse and on whatever other map I'm using at the time. Um, so I do think that we should have one without seasons so that we've got it, we strike a balance between both of them. Um, but that one I will sort of leave open at the moment. I'm not, I'm not making any commitments. But anyway, I have run out of time, so there's enough rambling from me. We'll finish up our bailing next time and then we can gather up the straw and. Uh, we need to think about getting planting and fertilizing and stuff like that done. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please hit down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much.
very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.